Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about lens combinations that goes together. The reason I'm gonna do this is because there's a lot of you that shoot more than one genre of photography. You're trying to build out a lens kit for your Canon cameras. We're trying to piece together a collection that makes sense it can sometimes be a little bit tricky because sometimes you shoot a lot of one thing and a little bit of something else and trying to work out what to buy first and how to make the lenses complement each other is difficult. And that's what this video is for, is to try and address that. The lenses I'm gonna be focusing on for this video are all gonna be EF lenses. I'm gonna cover cheaper lenses, such as the 51.8 and 85 1.8, and also the more expensive 1.2 versions, and zoom lenses and how to blend them all together for different types of photography. I think the first thing we need to do is set some standards about what we're talking about with these lenses. It is not always the case that a cheap lens is a bad quality lens. Sometimes they're really good. Sometimes we just need to know that a lens is good enough for a job we want to do. For instance, the 85mm 1.8, I used that lens to shoot the cover for the Chainsmoker single Closer for Sony Music, one of the biggest EDM songs of the last decade, and the cover for it was shot on the Canon 85mm 1.8. And I selected that lens because I knew it was good enough to do the job. And so that's a working example of what I'm gonna be talking about in some instances in this video. You should know I'm not a tech reviewer, I'm an actual photographer. So my experiences with lenses are based on real world work. My views are not based on test charts and spec sheets. Look at the genres of photography that you shoot and you have to work out the range in which you need to be in for that. By that, I mean the focal range. For instance, for landscapes, you're probably gonna want something wide angle. And for portraits, you're probably gonna want a mild or short telephoto lens. But most of us shoot more than one genre of photography, so how do we put this together? Now, if you're just starting out and you wanna be able to shoot a little bit of everything and do a reasonable job at it, take a really good look at the Canon 40 mm 2.8 STM. It's a very sharp, very good quality lens. It's really small and it's relatively cheap. A slightly wider focal length than 50 millimeters will allow you to do a little bit more street photography, get some more buildings in, give you more of the environment. It makes a very nice portrait lens for environmental portraiture as well. And it's so small and lightweight, you can take it everywhere with you and you can just do a bit of everything on it. For those that want a little bit more shallow depth of field, grab the 50 millimeter 1.8. I think for everyone who's doing photography, if I had my choice, I would start everyone off on a 5D classic with either the 40 or the 50 1.8, one of those two. And I'd get them on that for a year at minimum shooting just on that combination and making it work. Learn to do panoramas and stitch photos together, do portraits with it, do all different types of street photography and learn to really use your camera and become a good photographer. The thing you have to understand about photography is it is not about building a big lens collection to say, look, here I am, I'm a professional photographer, look how many lenses I've got. People will hire you or like your work because of the emotion and the vision that you express in your work. That's what photography is about. It's not about having a big lens collection. It's about having a few of the right lenses, not having lots and lots of lenses. Sometimes you'll see professional photographers have just built big lens collections. And sometimes that happens because they've been shooting for a long time and they switch genres or they like to shoot lots of different things and they've never sold the glasses they've gone along. They've built up a lens, big lens collection. Please do not confuse that with the idea that they need all of those lenses. What you'll find is at any point in a photographer's journey, they're pretty much based around one or two lenses. Most photographers that actually work as photographers will build kits that are a mixture of zoom lenses and prime lenses. I have a little saying that I made up which will help you understand how zooms and primes work in a photographer's kit. And that is that zooms build range and primes give looks. So sometimes it, my work requires that I will cover a focal range that I actually have it present and I might just use a zoom lens to do that. And at other times I want to give a consistent look. So let's start building some kits out for different budgets. I'm going to assume that you like to shoot maybe a little bit of landscape or architecture stuff, maybe a bit of street photography and some portrait work. And I'm going to throw in a few references to weddings as well. When I put some of these little kits together for you, if certain genres of photography don't apply to you, you can just cut that lens out of the list. So let's talk about budget. What's the most flexible, cheapest setup you could have? Well, I think one of the nicest setups to start with is the Canon 17-40 to f4. That would give you your landscape and your architecture photos. And I would combine that with a 50mm 1.8. 
whichever one you can get a good deal on. I don't think it really makes that much difference. Now the 51.8 will give you your portraits, a real budget price point, and it makes a really nice general purpose walk around lens. It's nice and lightweight, it's nice and cheap, and you can get a lot done with it. Now, as you build from there, then I'd add in the 85 millimeter 1.8. My personal feeling is it's much better to build out your focal range first. I would add in something like a 35 millimeter F2 IS from Canon, or maybe the Sigma 35 millimeter 1.4 Art as well. And then work out as you shoot more and more, what focal range is more your look, and then maybe get a more expensive lens in that range later on. But you won't know what that is until you shoot more. You might look at other photographers work and think, wow, I love the work on the 35. But when you shoot more of your own work, you might find that you prefer the 50 or maybe the 85 or maybe even the 135. It's really hard to say until you do more work of your own. Now onto that budget kit. If you were to then say that you might start shooting some weddings and you're new to it, I would bung in a 24 to 70 2.8 Mark I, which I have a review of up here, or perhaps the 24 to 105 F4, the first version, just to give that mid-range flexibility, which is always important for weddings. The next middle range kit I want to look at, now let's say you've got a little bit more money to spend and you want to get into a sort of a middle range kit. I would go for the 16-35 F4 IS for your wide angle work, but only on the basis that you really do a lot of it. If you're just a sometimes landscape photographer, I would definitely stick with the 17 to 40 F4. Between those two lenses, I don't think that there's a great deal of difference. The 16 to 35 is definitely sharper in the corners, but I don't think it's sharper in the middle of the frame. And for me, the corner sharpness isn't a deal breaker. It just doesn't amount to that much. Yes, you can see it when you compare side by side, I just don't think that for most people, they're studying the corners of images that much. So I think that if you're a photographer that isn't shooting a lot of landscape work or a lot of architecture work, I would stick with the 17 to 40 F4. But if you're someone that wants to do quite a bit of it, then get the 16 to 35 F4 IS. I would always recommend getting the F4 lenses over the 2.8s simply because that one stop of light when you're probably working on a tripod anyway just isn't going to make that much difference. You've got to remember you've got to carry that lens around and when you're outdoors these weights of things start to add up pretty quickly. Now when it comes to your portrait range, your 35, 50, 85 type lenses, your more obvious choices I'd say are the 35mm 1.4 Arts from Sigma. Now when it comes to the 50mm this is a tricky one because I don't rate the 50mm 1.4 from Canon. I just think it's not a very good lens. So I would stick with a 1.8 and I would only go up to the 1.2 if you really think that 50 is gonna be your predominant focal range. So even at the mid-range price point, I would still keep you with a 1.8. You do have the Sigma 50mm 1.4 art available, but again, I would only go for it if you really think that 50 is going to be the portrait focal length you're going to really drill down on. But at that point, for me, if you're doing outdoor portraiture, I prefer the look of the Canon 50mm 1.2, the original one. That's my choice. It's not as sharp or contrasty as the Sigma, but I prefer the way the images look from it. I just think they overall look better. And the 50mm 1.2, when you stop it down, if you want those studio shots that are sharper, it's very sharp as soon as you start stopping it down. For me, the 51.2 gives a magical, creamy, dreamy look when it's wide open that I think is really nice for outdoor portraiture. And then 85 millimeter range, you've got the 85 1.2, but again, I would only go for this lens if this is going to be your primary lens that you use. If this is going to be your workhorse lens for your photography, I would only upgrade to the 85 1.2 at that point. So here's what I'm suggesting for the people that are in the middle range. Buy the budget option lenses that I suggested at 35, 50 or 85 millimeter, unless you're absolutely sure that one of those ranges in particular is going to be your definite preferred range. And it's in that category that I would upgrade to one of the 1.4 or 1.2 lenses. But I'd keep the others in the budget range because they're not going to be used as frequently so it won't be having such an impact on your work. In the middle range, another lens that you can add in as well, especially if you're doing wedding photography work, is the 70 to 200 f2.8 version 2. Buy a used copy of that 
and you'll have a nice working range for lots of different genres of photography. Remember, it covers the 85 millimeter range, but it also gives you the 135 and 200, which will give you a lot of different looks, not just for weddings, but for portraits as well. It's a very flexible and a very good lens. Now, the higher end price points for this, I would go still for the 16-35 f4 IS. I still think that there's no need to get the 2.8s. So I know the other ones are more expensive. I'm not trying to just say this is the most expensive lens in class. I'm also recommending to you what I would buy if it were my money. It's just a much lighter lens and you're not gonna gain much with 2.8 at the wide angle. Now regarding the 35, 50 and 85, what I would do is probably pick two in that range. Now you could go for, th for three top end lenses, but I would be going for Canon all the way through. I would ditch Sigma at that point and I'd be going for the Canon 35mm 1.4, the Canon 50 1.2 and 85 1.2. I would say that you should be probably picking a couple of those. Maybe you get a 35 and a 50 or a 35 and 85 or 50 and one of the other two, whatever combination you want. Perhaps you get all four of these lenses. That might be the case. At the point when you start to spend that kind of money, you should have a clearer idea of who you are as a photographer. You should probably be picking out one or two of these expensive lenses and only going for those rather than feeling that you need to collect all of them. You can also see my views on the Canon 5D Mark 1, 2, 3 and 4 and the 6D Mark 1 over here.